Locomotion in VR, something that has baffled me for quite some time now. We've gone through so many advances in VR headsets from being completely wired to completely standalone. Resolutions got a boost, refresh rates got a boost, and yet here we're still stuck with joysticks. And so, on this channel we have tried multiple different methods of VR locomotion, from doing it completely yourself through DIY to companies like Cat VR sending over their devices like the Cat Loco S to allow you to walk in place. However, I don't think we have reached the magnum opus of VR locomotion just yet. That being said, when Cat VR contacted me about trying their Catwalk C, their consumer-based treadmill, I was highly interested. What is up everyone, today we're trying out what could possibly be the future of locomotion. The Catwalk C is a consumer-based treadmill for about $1,500. Currently it's on sale until the end of November, and Cat VR kindly sent it over for us to try out. So. Let me tell you what I think about it. First of all, right off the bat, the Catwalk C isn't going to be for everyone, possibly because of its large size, or its hefty price tag, or the noise it makes, but more on that a little later. Unboxing the Catwalk C was pretty simple. It came in a bunch of different boxes and the instructions were clear. There was a little bit of construction required. Well, sh the thing is pretty heavy, there is no denying that, and we built it up on livestream, so you could see the issues that we kind of went through live. But that being said, it was all very easy, and nothing could go wrong as long as you read the instructions. Once it was put together, of course, I had to try it out. The Catwalk C is more of a slide mill than a treadmill, considering the shoes have little plastic bits underneath that allow you to slide on the treadmill. It has one USB cable that you need to plug into your PC, and as we have proven during that live stream, it can be made wireless, which is really cool just in case that interests any one of you. Going back to the shoes, they sent me shoes of pretty much any size, which means everyone gotta go, but they have shoes in the most popular sizes, so they probably have yours as well. At the very bottom, they have two little plastic bits that allow you to slide on the treadmill. So it's not like you're walking and the treadmill is sliding underneath you, it's you sliding on top of the treadmill. Then you've got two little fabric bits. Each one of those you can take off. You have three modes. You can either play a normal mode, a little bit harder mode, and what they call veteran mode. So normal mode is with two of the fabric bits underneath causing the most friction, meaning it's the hardest to walk and less simple to slip. Then once you take one of those off, well, you've got what I would call the little bit harder mode. Depending on which one you take off, it's going to be easier or harder because one is smaller and one is larger. And then you've got veteran mode with none of them installed whatsoever. So of course, during the live stream, we had to try veteran mode. Now into veteran mode, you're perfectly fine. Don't trust me, you're, you're perfectly trust. safe. There you go. <laughs> it was interesting. But once you run on the treadmill for a little bit, it's pretty much natural. Yes, it's not going to be entirely like walking or running IRL, and my mom did have issues with it. It did seem like she was maybe leaning over a little bit too much, but I myself, not to flex, I got onto it and I pretty much instantly got the gist of it, which was quite interesting. After a few slips and slides, it was very, very simple to run, walk, or even duck on the treadmill. This is something we need to talk about. They have two sizes, one small and one large. So depending on what height you are, that's the one you need to choose. And this is quite important, simply because at the back, the treadmill has the strap that is going to keep you in place. And that strap is also going to keep you from falling over in case that was to happen. And it's very strong, as you could see during the slips and slides. But that strap also moves up and down to allow you to duck or, you know, maybe even jump, who knows, even though that's probably not recommended. So if you choose the wrong size, well, you won't be able to duck because it could be either too tall or too low, you know, and then you can't really move down. Now, walking while docked, it's a little bit complicated, and it's not exactly something I would be doing. So, who is this for? Why would you get this? It is a huge, huge upgrade from locomotion with a joystick, and I loved it so much more. The sweat was real, which also means the immersion was that much more real. Now, when you're playing this, I do recommend playing games where you don't have stamina, because that was incredibly annoying. While I myself in real life still had stamina, my character kept slowing down. What a lazy piece of sh This is for people that want that next step in VR. Maybe VR headsets haven't been moving as fast as people would like them to currently, even though that new Pimax headset has been announced. But VR Locomotion 
has gotten a huge boost. Unfortunately, we are still the early adopters, which means we have to pay the early adopter price tag. And as I said at the very beginning, this isn't going to be for everyone. This is also not necessarily going to be the people living in an apartment with people underneath or above them, or maybe even next to them, like, I have. Because this is not exactly quiet. It's pretty loud. After all, you are pretty much slamming plastic against plastic, which also means that your shiny brand new toy is going to get scratched. But that's the entire point of it. So in case you see scratches on it, don't worry, that's uh, you're scratching it. That's just what it is. But yeah, it is not exactly quiet, which is why I was playing mostly when everyone else was at work or kind of before quietness hours. And it is also pretty large. So, you know, placing it in your room, if you have a small room as a means of locomotion around, might not also be the perfect idea. I mean, I couldn't fit it in my room. It had to stand in the kitchen while I was testing it. That being said, do I think it is the next step for locomotion? Yes. Yes, I do. The amount of fun I had running on this treadmill was beyond anything I have ever had before in VR. Running around in VR chat, the forest, Skyrim VR was absolutely incredible. These open world games seriously allow you to feel the fun of being able to actually run around freely in VR without having to worry about space constraints. It is a completely new feeling that I only felt once when I took VR to the beach and didn't care about where exactly I ran. And when you're running for a while, any discrepancy that you see between running on the treadmill and running in real life fades away because it just becomes immersive. So in case you are one of those people looking to take immersion to the next step and aren't necessarily worried about being an early adopter and have the money to buy something like this and you've been wondering about buying something like this, maybe for exercise or maybe you just want to play, then I would say go for it. This has been literally the most fun I have had in VR for a very, very long time, right after full body tracking that is. And also, when you're walking on the treadmill, it's pretty natural after a while. So walking and kind of full body. Of course, that being said, for all you people planning on using this thing in VR chat with full body tracking, dancing isn't really a problem, but you might have issues with a few different poses. Like for example, don't try laying down on this thing. That being said, if you are a person who plays first person shooters in VR and are looking to buy the treadmill to kind of run around in something like Pavlov, where you constantly need to run, hide, duck, and other things, it may not entirely be perfect for you. The whole ducking mechanism and hiding probably behind things isn't going to be ideal. If you do duck a lot in VR games, this is going to be very difficult to duck and walk with, unless, of course, you use the joystick, because the joystick isn't turned off while you're running on the treadmill. I sometimes found myself running around in the forest, and when I wanted to cut down a tree and do these kind of minor adjustments to my location, I would use the joystick. So that is something to keep in mind. The treadmill does connect to your PC using a USB cable, and it communicates with Steam VR through the CAT gateway, where you can adjust everything from your speed to whether you want strafing to be allowed to whether you want walking to be allowed to sensitivity and it usually finds every game pretty much perfectly and it adjusts all the settings automatically to the game that you are playing which is really cool but considering it emulates joystick I'm pretty sure it runs with every game but you know I can't try out every game in the world so I could be wrong there the conclusion I love it I absolutely love it and as much as I had to take it upstairs for now and just kind of leave it standing because my mom wanted the kitchen to to be free. When we get the studio, I'm going to be using this thing a whole ton more. It's great for exercise, which I sometimes can't exactly go out running here, which running, by the way, is one of my favorite sports because this is Ireland and the rain here is just this is a great alternative. I mean, I'm telling you, the sweat was absolutely real. To just having that little bit of more immersion in VR games and not having to use that joystick. I mean, actually feeling that adrenaline of seeing a cannibal and breaking into a sprint was something I did not think was going to happen in VR for another little while. Because if I didn't have the treadmill, I'd just run into the wall. So it is pretty damn amazing. And thank you so much once again to Cat VR for sending this over for me to try out. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I do not have an affiliate link or anything like that. They just kindly sent it over for me to try out and tell you guys my thoughts on it. So in case you guys do think that this might be 
be the right accessory for you. Make sure to check it out down below. Again, they currently have a discount going until the end of November, so it could just be the perfect time to try it out. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like. It helps the channel out a lot and it doesn't cost you anything. However, if you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys want to know anything at all about the treadmill that maybe I missed during today's video, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And of course, you know, you can ask me questions on Discord. Feel free to tag me. I never get angry about that. Thank you so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys help me make the content better and just overall buy better gear and pay my bills. So thank you so much for that. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that does not put a huge ad on your body. And of course, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button down below and see you again in today's live stream.